can you please introduce yourself and tell me about your role at King's? Yes, I'm uh, Kate Chen Gainty, and I am a historian of science, technology, and medicine. Um, and I focus primarily on 20th century history of medicine and really on healthcare um, and how our modern constitution of healthcare came to be. Um, and one of my special interests is really about the way in which um, the kind of acute hospital based care that we primarily or that we we focus most on today um, came to be sort of the default um, method of care. Um, and so this has really made me think a lot about the other alternative models of care that were um, around at the same time, but for one reason or another weren't picked up as the model that we would follow along with. Um, and I think the pandemic has really highlighted the limitations of the acute hospital-based care model that we've adopted because it's really sort of limited the uh, the public health side of care um, that's also really important. And so, you know, you can see really clearly in terms of this current sort of situation that we're in, this pandemic situation, the way in which um, acute hospital care has really not uh, done what we needed to do um, in terms of protecting the nation's health. Um, and we don't have the public health care infrastructure um, to really, you know, to 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 really step in and kind of take over um, in that work. And so one of the findings that um, I've I've sort of historically sort of uh, focused on is this idea that we we could learn from the past to sort of diversify our healthcare systems now. Um, and I think the pandemic has really shown us one way in which that diversification would be really really useful. So essentially, you believe that we're fighting coronavirus with 100 year old tech, even though we've got all this amazing technology at our hands now that they didn't have 100 years ago when they were fighting the Spanish flu. Can you explain a bit more about that? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a real paradox that's apparent here that um, we are quarantining just as we did um, in 1918, um, that that quarantining differs from country to country, um, that we were looking for vaccines, um, that we uh, were using all of these, uh, you know, kind of, we they didn't call it, um, they didn't call it social distancing, but used that kind of logic um, uh, for the basis of their um, of their response to Spanish flu, um, and they and epidemi epidemiologists uh, tracked Spanish flu much as we do in terms of mortality, um, in terms of cases, um, and of course their methods for that were not the same as our methods. Our methods are much more sophisticated, but it is really striking the extent to which. Uh, we're doing pretty much the same things, the same set of things um, that we did 100 years ago for Spanish flu um, and contrast that with what's happened otherwise in the history of medicine over the 20th century. Um, we have incredibly high tech hospitals. We really depend on technology as a driver of healthcare more generally. Um, and we and we spend a lot of time sort of lauding healthcare as something that is really high tech and therefore really productive and useful. Um, and I think it really showcases the way in which we've overinvested in a very particular way of thinking about health and healthcare and really underinvested in this other way, um, left it sort of undeveloped, uh, such that these are the things that we have to sort of fall back on in our response to a pandemic. And I think if this were in another area of healthcare, um, we would find it unacceptable. We would find it just really crazy to think that this is all that we can do. But because we've made this distinction already about um, you know, what constitutes good care, which means good personal uh, acute care, um, we all sort of accept the idea, well, that this is the best that you can do in a pandemic. And I think that we should take a moment and say, maybe that's not the best we can do. Maybe instead, this is a way of showing us um, places where we need to be better in terms of healthcare. And where are you going to take your findings and your research? I think one of the things, I mean, it's very important as a historian um, to, to really uh, make a difference, um, you know, to kind of be as useful as possible in terms of public policy, 
um, be as useful and possible just in terms of, you know, educating people about um, how people in the past have thought about health and sort of losing this notion that there is only one right way um, and that we need to embrace sort of more models of this. And so one of the more immediate things that we'll do um, is to take this um, write this up as evidence to bring to um, the par parliamentary uh, committee on um, health care. Um, so there's been a, a parliamentary call for um, information about health care and, and its future. So we'll respond to that. Um, we're also looking to uh, to to keep um, trying to kind of keep a hand in um, uh, in, in newspapers or things like that, just to kind of pose questions about how we might think differently about healthcare, hopefully to create a, a public conversation about this, um, to see if that helps us kind of as a group come to grips with what's happening and, and maybe think about how we can do better in the future. So in terms of the impact of your research, it could be that you're contributing to discussion on changing the public healthcare system moving forward for potential future pandemics or other areas of public health care? Yes, I mean, I think what we'd like to see actually, or what I would like to see actually, is a, is a rethinking, a radical rethinking of how we do health care in this country, but in, in all countries that have adopted this form of, of health care service. Um, I think this is a great moment for us to take stock in what we've done well and what we can do, um, what we can do better. So, in that vein, um, uh, with some colleagues, we're working on uh, thinking more about how do we flesh out some of these lessons that we've learned from the pandemic. How do we trace them back to historical roots, roots, and how can then these become a roadmap for going forward um, in a useful and productive way uh, to improve healthcare? So that's a big part of of the agenda as well. Great. Well. Wishing you the best of luck with your research, Kate Jan, and thank you very much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me.